There's big drama right now on 14.300 on the HF band and maybe even more so on the internet talking about this HF band, talking about who owns the frequency, talking about the nets that take place on this band. I did a video about this a few weeks ago and now there's even more information, more follow-ups posted on Reddit, which I'm going to share with you right now. I actually found two different articles talking about big drama on 14.300 and a follow-up for the Maritime Mobile Net and Intercon Net's Frequency Cops. Okay, so we're going to read through both of these. I was going to do two separate videos and I read through them and I'm like, no, nah, I think I'll put them together because they're, they're, they're basically about the same thing. And this one right here is uh, short and sweet. So I understand where this guy's coming from, okay, but I, I don't really agree with this... Uh, this definition here. Okay, so he says the Mocku military moron net and the incontinent net. Now, the actual is it's the maritime mobile net and the intercon net. Admittedly, I don't know what the intercon net is. I don't know what that is. I don't think I've ever heard those guys on the air. Apparently, they operate at different times on the same frequency. So between those two nets, they try to take up that frequency all day long, 24-7. And I have my own thoughts to share about that. So watch till the end and I'll, sh I'll tell you a little bit about my personal opinions around that and some follow-up emails I got about it as well. So these two nets were having a ball running anyone they could off frequency about 20 minutes ago this was written on this was written three days ago at the time of this recording including someone trying to run poda on 14.302 while 300 was silent one of the test questions in the in the general test i believe it is how wide is your bandwidth and your bandwidth for single sideband phone should be about three kilohertz wide so if you're on upper sideband it's going to be three kilohertz above your signal or your uh, frequency if you're on lower sideband, 40 meter, 80 meter, it's going to be 3 kilohertz below your signal. If you're doing more than 3 kilohertz, there might be something wrong with your transmitting equipment. But presumably, since 14 megahertz, 20 meters, uh, which is the band we're talking about today, 14.300 megahertz, anyone transmitting on that frequency, since it's upper sideband, you could hear them up to 3 kilohertz above that frequency. So someone operating at like 14.303 might hear a net going on at 14.300. But like this article says, 14.300 was silent right now, and, and this POTA station was on 14.302. So they're not on the net frequency. They're within 3 kilohertz, but you can't always avoid that. There's not enough bandwidth on the band to avoid 3 kilohertz of everyone out there operating, and 20 meters is the most popular band on HF right now. It usually is. So if you land on a frequency and you listen 3 kilohertz down, because you're on upper sideband, so if they're transmitting... You might hear them three kilohertz above where they're transmitting. If you're transmitting, someone else might hear you three kilohertz above that. The best practice, the general practice, is to kind of listen around three kilohertz in either direction of where you are transmitting, where you plan to to stop and call CQ Poda. That's the best practice. And if there's nothing heard, then go for it. It's your frequency at that point in time. Call out, is this frequency in use from, and then put your call sign. Do that one or two or three times. If nobody comes back to you, take off man do it so once again they say trying to run pod on 14.302 while 300 was silent they kept coming in saying the itu has designated 14.300 as an emergency traffic only and the arl has jurisdiction over the fcc both of those things are wrong okay both of these things itu designated 14.3 as emergency traffic only no they didn't and arl does not have jurisdiction over the fcc boy wouldn't that be cool if they did we could get some stuff done in ham radio but Maybe that's a topic for another day. Moving on. They couldn't even find the net controller for this session, and so someone designated themselves and faked a check-in with some lid to hold it in their words. They were holding the frequency. Yeah, you can't really do that. Well, I guess you can, but come on. It essentially seems like they dropped their mask today and were using the active net concept in order to secure the frequency with only one controller and one check-in. We'll have to go through the recordings of their stuff. And they, he says he linked an audio below. And for, for whatever reason, it looks like this got redacted by Reddit. I can't find this audio file that was linked. Someone made... Reading through the comments, someone made a mention of that they couldn't find the audio saying, hey, where's the audio? There's no link for the audio. So now, if anyone has any audio of someone being a jack wagon on 14.300 that's a representative of these two nets, please send that to me, kc 5 hwb at gmail.com. I would love to hear that because I don't think this is the last... Well, in fact, I know this is not going to be the last video I make about this subject, and let me tell you why. After the initial video I put up about this, I had one of the net control guys reach out to me via email saying, hey, I've watched your video. 
these are my responses. And I said, hey, you know what? There's some good responses in here. I would like to make a follow-up video about, you know, including your email. Do I have your permission to do that? And he replied back to me a few days later. He's like, let me reword a few things, and then I'll tell you what you can share. I'm like, okay. I don't want to misquote anyone. Another video coming soon for that. Now, about the same time I found that article, and this one's this uh, hats off to this, and this is the same guy. So hats off to the same same poster, and he posted this looks like about one day later. And he posted follow up: both Maritime Mobile Net and Intercon's Net's frequency cops failed to abide by the guidelines established by their supposed governing body regarding the use of 14.3. First of all, we know that no one has ownership of a frequency. That anyone tells you to move off of 14300 or surrounding frequencies because 14.3 is supposedly an international emergency frequency is wrong. Okay, and he does some really good linking in this article of of, of these things. Okay, and this this is this is put together very well. I will link this article in the description below so that you guys can go check that out. I'm going to read most of this to you. But first, let me tell you about MNP coax. If you're going to go out to POTA, if you're going to set up a net control station, if you're going to set up any type of HF radio station, I highly recommend Mezzi and Poloni coax out of Italy. You can save a 10% discount on all of their coax items. The coax itself, the ends, the connectors, the tools to assemble them. All items are 10% off with the coupon code of HR2Cables at the link in the description below. Thank you, Mezzi and Poloni, for supporting this channel. Okay, so anyone who tells you they have frequency and ownership is wrong. However, the lids that hover and idle on these frequencies love to cite the FCC ARRL or ITU to claim that they have ownership of 14.3. I was wondering where this idea came from, given the previous experiences I encountered today. And he links the article we just shared. He links it back right here. So here's the Intercon Nets webpage, and here's what it states. Okay, now again, the Intercon Net, I've never heard of this net. To my knowledge, I've never checked into it. I have checked into the Maritime Mobile Net before. Generally speaking, they're just taking check-ins. It's just very informal taking check-ins. How's the weather in your area? That that type of thing. And I have some thoughts on that as well. I have some thoughts on that as well. So we'll get to that in a minute. This net operates every day from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 1200 to 1700 Zulu during Standard Time and 1100 to 1600 Zulu during Daylight Savings Time on 14.300 megahertz, which has been designated by the IARU. So not the ITU, not the FCC, the IARU, which is the International Amateur Radio Union. This is basically a union or an organization that gets together and says, how can we make amateur radio kind of uniform across the globe? So they kind of get together and form a bunch of gentlemen's agreements to try to keep the bands free and clear so that you can go operate where you want to. So designated by the IARU as a worldwide center of activity frequency for emergency traffic. Center of Activity Frequency for Emergency Traffic. That's going to become important here in a minute. The Maritime Mobile Service Net, a separate organization with their own management rules and website, takes over at noon Eastern Time. The last part is quite convenient. The MMN, the uh, Maritime Mobile Net's page states, the Maritime Mobile Net Service Net is operated every day from 12, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. for 10 hours you're running in a net, tying up a frequency, running a net? Really? On the 20 meter global emergency center of activity frequency 14.300 megahertz as outlined by the international radio union presumably they mean the uh the iaru what does center of activity mean according to iaru okay and he gives a link here and then he and then he and he quotes part of it they are not absolute frequencies but instead a center of activity and emergency communications may be found plus or 20 kilohertz from the centers plus or 20 kilohertz that's kind of that's kind of big. Some countries may maintain other emergency frequencies in their own band plans due to local uh, requirements in QRM, etc. So 14.300 isn't a sacred frequency by their own designation, but part of a spectrum that is subject to local requirements, including QRM. QRM interference, as as referred to in this case by A I A R U for these emergency communications and net purposes, is anything that is not related to emergencies. They're calling anything, any activity on the band that's not related to emergencies QRM is what IARU designates. Okay. In fact, IARU has recommendations section their own handbook for emergency communications regarding interference during a net. Remember, Intercon Net and MMM consider their nets to be active 24 hours, and therefore anyone using 14.300 for anything but these nets would therefore be interference. Okay, and there's a link there. Okay, and he quotes interference problems. If your net experience is interference, the NCS has several options. 
If the interference is coming from an adjacent or co-channel stations that may be unaware of the emergency net, the NCS should politely inform them of the net and ask for their cooperation. NCS is net control station, by the way. Those of you who may not know, NCS means net control station. The net control might ask an HF net to move over a few kilohertz. If the problem cannot be solved in this manner, each net should have one or more alternate frequencies that it can move to if required. If possible, the frequencies themselves should not be published or mentioned on the air. I would mention it. I would think you'd want to mention it on there. Say, hey, everybody move over here. That's weird. Never discuss a knowledge or try to speak with an inter intentionally interfering station. Many years of experience have proven this to only encourages the offender. I will say this real quick. As a YouTuber, when I go out and do POTA, sometimes I will hear someone come back to me that's just obviously trying to interfere. Because they'll, so, they'll say something like, I got a question. And they'll, and they'll say it like this. They'll make their voice all squeaky and high. Or they'll make themselves sound stupid. They already sound stupid. They don't they don't need to try that much harder. They'll say, I got a question about a bail fang. And they'll say it just like that. Can you answer my question about my bail fang? And they'll say this while I'm calling CQ Poda. They don't ID. They're not they're not man enough. They're not brave enough to ID. But they'll do this. And sometimes they'll go, Hey, can, I need to talk to a famous YouTuber. Can you help me? And this s stupid crap like that. Just, you know. It's happened maybe four or five times over the past four years when I've been doing POTA. Not often, but every now and then. And you know what I do? Nothing. I ignore them. I totally ignore them. I call CQ POTA. If, some, uh, if a station comes back to me, I'll say, Station ending in Zulu. Station uh, Kilo Charlie 4 station come back, and I'll just keep going. I'll keep working the pileup, or I'll keep calling CQ if there is no pileup, and I just ignore them. And after they try that like, like three or four times, they go away because they figure that A, maybe no one wants to talk to their dumbass, or B, maybe I can't hear them because they're using a Zygu radio or something. I don't know. I, I'm teasing about the Zygu radio, kind of. But they don't know that I can't, can or can't. They don't know how loud their signal is. Usually their signal is not very loud. They're maybe a 5x5. Five five. So I just ignore those guys. Ignoring them is the best thing to do. And they do go away because they're not sm smart enough to stick around. Never discuss or acknowledge. Okay, if the, okay, and in bold. If the interference is making communication difficult, simply announce to the net that everyone should move to the alternate frequency and sign off. Better yet, put a plan in place so that when interference occurs, all net members know to move to an alternate frequency without being told to do so on the air. So in short summary, based on this information, the governing body that the Maritime Mobile Net, Mike Mike November, and I end both side as granting them uninterruptible communications on 14.300, not only states that 14.3 is just a range of frequencies, but if there's traffic on the frequency, read interference, then the thing to do, onus, is that a word? O-N-U-S? I don't recognize that word. Either I'm dumb or that guy mistyped that. Then the onus is, the best thing to do, is on the net itself to QS wide, not the station that was operating on the frequency first. Again, yes, no one can own a frequency, and anyone who tells you this is wrong. But if any of these lids specifically want to fight you about it, tell them that their own guidelines say that it's them that should move, not you. Well said. I got a letter from one of the net control officials, one of the NCS stations, and he, and again, let me, let me reiterate, he was very polite. This is not verbatim. This is ad-libbing. But he said something about how that frequency is designated 24-7, or he kind of hinted towards that. And pretty much everything else he said in his email, I, I pretty much agreed with. He did say that a lot of the times, MMN net members or people who are somehow connected with the net but they're not net control stations maybe they're just checking they just listen they like to listen they're they're checking stations a lot of times those guys get on and and they are rude to people around the frequency and uh and the gentleman who emailed me he was like you know what we can't really control what other people say the net control stations should not be rude to anyone on the frequency and that's something that we stress a lot but if anyone else gets on the frequency and tries to defend us, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm like, you know what? I totally agree with that. Completely agree with that statement. That is absolutely 100% true. My main point of the last video I made, and my main point that I'll stress here again today, is that there's no cause ever to be rude. A lot of the comments I got in uh, my last video said, well, yeah, but this net's been going for like 20 or 30 years and everybody knows about it and it's published on the internet. So you should just you should just know, automatically know this and move. How is that any different than any other HF net on the internet? How are you supposed to know when all of these HF nets take place? Do a quick Google search for uh, ham radio HF nets 
And I'll do an overlay right here of this one that I found. This is ridiculous. How are you supposed to know all of these nets and memorize the times? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. A again, no one owns a frequency. If you know the Maritime Mobile Net is about to start at 300, 14 not 300, and it's 1130 where you are, maybe pick another frequency. Be courteous. And the last question I'm going to ask is, I have a marine radio that I keep down in my Galveston house, and I listen to the marine band when I am on the coast. I've listened to it here at home. There's no activity, even with a lake not too far down the road. But on the coast, on the, uh, on the, on the Gulf of Mexico, and presumably on the, on the east and west coast in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, you're going to hear activity from boats and from the Coast Guard. I hear the Coast Guard quite a bit on VHF marine band radio. The people I know, some family members I know who have boats have VHF marine band radio and a VHF antenna on their boats. Who has HF on a boat? Do all the big ships like the cruise liners or whatnot, do they have HF? I don't know if they do. I'm asking you. Who has HF on a boat? When's the last time you actually saw HF on a boat? You should. I think everybody should have HF. I think everybody should have a ham radio license too. So you should have HF on a boat. When's the last time you saw it? What boats, if this is an emergency net that goes 24 seven, which again, I don't agree with, who are they talking to? Because I can't recall ever seeing an HF radio on a boat. Maybe a big cruise ship, maybe a big freight liner ship, maybe so, maybe they do. Cross Atlantic, cross Pacific Ocean ships that go from one continent to another, from North America to Asia, or from North America to Europe, or from Europe to Australia. These ships, okay. But who is running HF at sea? I'd like to know that. Put a comment below. 73, thanks for watching, guys.